big hill. Anybody remember a baby sheep that lived in the stable? Look how amazing she's looking. Actually thought she was gonna die. It's running free with the flock. This is the field we emptied the midden onto, hence why it's leafy green. Rough muck, guys, rough muck. It's at Tower Brewery where we get the brewery from. Beep, beep! <laughs> I'm that ridiculous, I was actually tempted to shout then. <laughs> so these are a delight since they've been dipped. They are looking miles better. They were just spending all the time itching and rubbing around and now they're spending all the time growing, which is really what we want. So these are, I can't even, uh, I, was, I was at a hospital with my neighbor and I'm like, I'm dead tired. Um, but on the plus side, Ellen, as in like, you know, shepherdess Ellen, like watch one of my YouTube videos. <laughs> super proud, super proud. She called me a legend. Thanks Ellen. Congrats on the baby. If it cries, just. The, this is about the fourth time we have been in this situation. What on earth will possess you to put your head through there in the first place? Why? Why would you do that? I'm so, I'm so Jenny from the club. You say I'm a little now, have a look. Phil Karaoke now open for entries. Leave them in the comments and I will slay them. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. You know, like, I don't act like this in real life. I'm really reserved. Um, quite shy. Normal. Desperately seeking a large chest freezer. Seriously, there we are. So, you know, last night, like on the video, I joked about the hospital um, with my finger. You wouldn't believe that I ended up in hospital with a neighbour of ours um, until some obscene time this morning and I went to bed at five o'clock. <laughs> it was like I jinxed the whole situation. Wow. Glamorous. Look at me, honest to God, I'm feeling so rough. Look at the weather, guys. That is misery, isn't it? Oh, well, since the cows went into that little field the other day that I showed you, um, they have exhausted their green bucket. So we have gone and got another one. Ta -da! This is what it looks like when they come. If you do not already know, it's like hard. Imagine a toffee apple. That's exactly what that is. That's quite nice. Nice. I think what this does, it helps maintain um, blood magnesium levels when they are eating at grass, which it actually says on the side of it, it's a cattle high magnesium molasses lick. Um, and it is for cows that have babies uh, that are lactating, producing milk, and it's to keep them fit and healthy um, when there's no um, goodness in the grass. I just had a look and they are 96.65. Um, but if it saves the life of a cow, 
it's nothing, isn't it? It's nothing. With like the cast cow trade being so good, um, like we had a good all round red cow. If you've come over from uh, TikTok, you will have seen me make videos on her. She went geld last month and she made 1200 pounds. So it is worth spending that little bit of money to keep the animals going and happy and healthy. Bloody puddles because the weather is dire. So we can get away with using the S250 Beast. Whoa! Business! I love my stickers. Everyone buys stickers off Joe Seals. So when I was saying yesterday about pneumonia and why we have not brought the cows in, I've got the perfect Ill, like visible illustration for you all about why. Hold on. I'm sneaking. I'm very sneaky. That there is visible steam rising off the cows. Can you see? just clean my phone because I dropped it um, in a big pile of before. That warm that the cows are actually steaming. Now, if you imagine that in a shed environment, the cows get sweaty, it's humid, it's warm. It is the perfect um storm for pneumonia and with young stock as well you don't want that you don't even want that chance so what we do is we leave them out yes it looks a mess but we leave them out normally until november don't we yeah. um just to get that frost and that cold um so that obviously the shed's freezing cold the hot air goes off the cows and then literally goes up into the the ridge here and disappears out of the top if they were to go into a shed now, it'd just be hot, humid, or oh, it'd be awful, wouldn't it? Not good at all. I think ventilation and airflow in sheds is probably one of the biggest issues that um, farmers face, to be honest. It's ridiculous, isn't it? The amount of times you can get it wrong. That roof ridge there, in fact, I'm going to go and show you it, has been redone once. Historically, in a shed, it would have looked like this. And basically that is just a, a ridge that is sort of like this and the hot air goes out of the ridge. It's completely open. As you can see, there is the sky. This is over a feed passage. So all the cows would stand in a line here and it does go up and out. And I've just come to put S250 beasts away and um, we've got a flood down there. It is just water. Um, but at the rate the cows are going at the bales, like there's literally no point in moving them. When S and A came to do the big shed, walk over here. There's lots of walking in this video, you know. S and A Buildings, Barney Castle. They did this shed for us, and their ridge was basically an open ridge with a little hat on. You can see the open ridge, but then you can see they've just made some little brackets, and then there is a hat that sits on the top of it. We had used this old technique on these new buildings here. Um, but they were in the middle of the shed and it was like the rain just kept pouring in and the beds were all getting, you know, wet at the front and then they were trampling it back and we were having major issues with keeping things clean. We rang s and and we said we want little tin hats like the big shed and there we have 
little tin hats like the big shed. I've not had a problem in here since. The beds are dry. Like solid beds, they're good beds. Um, I can't even tell you how bad that winter was when we were trying to keep everything clean. And it was just, oh, it was horrendous. Like you could feel where underneath the ridge. And even if you stood spreading straw at night, you could see it raining in, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, like Rose said, it is the type of rain like today. When there's no wind and it just comes straight down. Many of you are putting up new sheds. And it was actually our friend Jonathan who had highlighted that to Roy. Um, and then just said, not telling you your business, I think you probably said. Um, but would you have a look at this before you do anything final? So we did, and thank you for that. There's actually a tin hat in here, a spare one. I'm going to show it you so you can see. Actually, just the hay barn um, and a load of drainage stuff. But here is that is all it is. Look, it's not made of a lot. They are. They are not that long underneath that chicken house. Anyway, as we speak, going, don't show people the mess. But in the interest of education, everyone invest in little hats for your roof. They work. Seriously, they work. They're just tin. So because the farm's developed over the years, um, we have made the handling system a lot more um, easy to use, accessible, um, and we, it's not even a big deal um, putting something through the handling system now, to be honest. It, it used to fill me with dread when I'd say we were going to move some cows and do something. I'd be like, oh, and I'd get like really bad anxiety about moving them. What could go wrong? The stress, the hollering, the hooping. It isn't an issue anymore. When the cows come in from the fields, they will not be going straight into the sheds. They will be going via the handling system and they will be having all of the backs clipped out, all of the calves. Everyone will be um, sorted in here before they then um, go into the sheds, they'll be trapped for lungworm. Um, and it's just taken time to make small changes that make it easier to move stock and handle them a lot more effectively. Um, not just only in time, but safety um, and stress-wise as well. The operator and the animal um, 